Right, the British sprinter CJ Uja has been banned for 22 months after testing positive for two banned substances at the Tokyo Olympics. He and his teammates were previously stripped of their Olympic silver medals because of the violation. Uh, for more on this story, we can speak to our senior reporter, Garrett Hughes. Good afternoon to you, Garrett. So take us through what's happened then, please. Yeah, if you can stretch your minds back to the Tokyo uh, Olympics of, of last summer, uh, Team GB, uh, the men's 4x100 relay team, they won a sensational silver. They nearly got gold pipped on the line uh, by the uh, Italians, uh, but it was a silver medal. They picked up their medals and they celebrated. It was right towards the, the end of the Games, yet on the uh, uh, straight afterwards, there, uh, there are obligatory doping tests where an A sample is tested, and CJ Uja, who uh, ran the first leg of that, uh, that relay, uh, his A sample came back with a, 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 an adverse finding. Uh, the B sample confirmed that as well. Uh, and unfortunately for Team GB and for CJ Uja, they were stripped of their medals. They were no longer uh, the Olympic silver medalist. It didn't just affect CJ Uja, it affected the whole team. CJ Uja, though, stood to uh, receive a four-year ban. A doping violation can bring a four-year ban. But eventually it was resolved over the various months through the Court of Arbitration for Sport that in February of this year that he was to receive a two-year ban. Today, though, uh, following investigations by WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, and the Athletes Integrity Unit, it's been proven that CJ Uja uh, unintentionally uh, took uh, a contaminated supplement. So uh, the ban he receives is two years with a reduction of another two months to 22 months because he didn't contest uh, the, the analytical uh, findings that he had uh, uh, approved a doping violation that, that he helped with the investigation as well but he was throughout saying he did not intentionally uh, take uh, drugs uh, that it was a part of a contaminated supplement within uh, uh, within the supplements he was taking uh, the AIU and WADA have agreed with this and therefore he is uh, being proven to unintentionally taken drugs however there still comes a stiff ban of 22 months because it is up to the athlete what they take. And they have, they have a, a list of uh, the various supplements that they have to take and that they have to tick off. And uh, even though CJ Uja unintentionally has taken the supplements, it was his responsibility of what went in his body. So he is now banned for 22 months, backdated to August of uh, 2021. So he'll be free to run again now in June of next year. So, Garen, is that the, the strict liability then coming into play? Is that what you mean by that? Tell us more. Absolutely, 100%. Yes, today it's been proven through the Athletes Integrity Unit and WADA that he unintentionally took a supplement that was contaminated. But the rules are really clear for professional athletes, regardless of the sport, whether they're athletics, whether they're football, whether they're rugby players. What goes into their body is down to them and the people around them as well. Supplements, as we well know, have caused a great deal of headaches for a number of athletes over recent years. But there are supplements which are on a, on a certain list where the, 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 the QR codes, where the barcodes, where everything can be traced. In this case, CJ Uja took a supplement which was not on that list. Therefore, it is totally down to him what went to hit his body. Yes, they accept that he unintentionally uh, took the supplement which was contaminated, but it is down to him what goes into his body. So sadly for him, he remains banned, a 22-month ban for a really, really promising athlete who should be, uh, you know, should have a silver medal round his next Olympics last summer, but he doesn't nor do the three other members of that team that uh, were successful in Tokyo last year. Yeah, which brings me to my last question then, Garen. It didn't just impact him, did it? It caused this relay uh, to lose their Olympic silver medal. So how is his relationship with that team now? Yeah, listen, it's bad enough for, for, for any athlete when they receive a ban because, you know, a, a, a sport, whether as I say, whether it be athletics or any other sport, that is their profession, their livelihood. And when they, 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 they can't do their, their profession, they can't earn a living and they have to find something else to do. So it's bad enough for CJ Uja, but it was, uh, you know, completely catastrophic for uh, the, the other members of the men's 4x100 team. Zarnell Hughes, uh, Richard Kilty and Nathaniel Mitchell-Blake uh, as Wake. Reese Prescott was the, was the reserve 
serve on, on, on that day as well. Uh, he's been publicly forgiven by a couple of them. Zarnell Hughes and Reese Prescott have both in interviews just recently over the summer months said, listen, CJ Uja, as far as they're concerned, he's a good guy. He's apologised to them in person and tried to explain what happened, and they've accepted those apologies. Uh, for others, Richard Kilty, for example, uh, he's been quite public in his condemnation of CJ Uja. Uh, he, is not, he has not forgiven him. He's, he's angry with him, and he's angry with him that he, he didn't play by the rules that all the other athletes have to do, because what goes into your body as an athlete is down to you. You have to be more than careful, more than cautious, uh, especially when you're working in, in, in Olympic sports. And for Richard Kilty, it's been a, a, a very, very difficult time. Uh, CJ Usual will, will be able to represent uh, uh, Great Britain and Northern Ireland in, in, in an international vest again at the, the World Championships in Budapest next summer. That's in 2023, because he has banned ends on the 5th of June of next year. So he'll have a couple of months to try and prove his fitness and try to prove his form as well as to whether he can race in a GB and Northern Ireland vest uh, uh, again. But as I say, there are some bridge, bridges that need to be built there. A couple of them have uh, he has, he's clearly spoken to and they have forgiven to him. But it's a very, very difficult time because winning an Olympic medal, a silver medal for a, a lot of athletes is a pinnacle of their, of their sport, a pinnacle of their professional lives. Uh, and that was taken away from them in Tokyo last year.